On today's show, a lady shares how her lifestyle of drugs, alcohol, and bad choices almost destroyed her until she found Jesus. And I thought I had crossed the line because I had done so much at such a young age. I just thought, I'm just doomed. I thank God for his mercy because even though I made those choices, he still was there for me. Friend, if you've made some bad choices in your life and you're looking for peace, you're not going to want to miss this episode of Our Grace Family starting now. Welcome to Our Grace Family. Thank you for joining us. I'm Reverend Steve Millar, a minister here at Grace Cathedral, and this is my lovely wife, Kathy. On today's program, we have a member from Grace Cathedral joining us. Welcome to the program, Sylvia. We're so happy to have you with us today. Thank you, happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> now, this show is all about the reality of God in people's lives, sharing those stories and testimonies. And you have a very unique story. You started uh, really rebelling as a child. I think you were 12 years old. So you can you start with your life at that point in your life and share with us what was going on? Well, um, I had begun to uh, get in with, make some poor choices and go in with the wrong crowd. And um, I began smoking and 12 or 13, I began drinking. And um, I felt deprived in my own life because we had strict rules. We had to be in a certain time and I could see other kids doing different things. And I was, it kind of, the fascination of it lured me that way. You wanted that freedom that you thought the yeah. other kids your yes. age had. So yes. you decided to go the other way instead yes. of staying yes. under the house rules. Yes, unfortunately. And um, so um, in doing so, um, I, after time went on, I had ran away from home and um, I was gone for a couple of years. And in that time I did, you know, just continue to drink, do drugs, did whatever I wanted to do. And um, so at that point you had left home and you're living this lifestyle of just doing whatever you want. So you weren't even going to school at that time, right? Right, I was truant. Was that like age 14, 15 or something? Something like that, yeah. Okay. It's been a long time ago. So. Uh-huh. So you just were just living on, you know, doing your own thing at age 14 years old or whatever age it was right around that period. And, exactly. And, you know, that's young yes. for a 14-year-old. Yes. And uh, the people that I was with, they, they were older. And so I guess I just felt like they, you know, were doing the right thing and and I was in good hands, you know, but that's the mind of a 14 year old on drugs, I guess. Right. Um, yeah, so um, the, from there, things got worse. I just, that was just my life. I could be doing drugs for days, you know, outside of sleeping, you know, I, um, just drinking and. So what happened next? So, you know, they, the police were looking for me, but they couldn't ever find me. And I wasn't that far. I was just right behind my parents' home in another house in the back. I guess they just didn't think I would be that close. Uh, I remember something else that I, my mom was walking down the street one day. I had gotten a wig that was, it was a black wig. And when I, somebody told me, your mom's coming. And we were outside, I don't know if we were playing volleyball or what it seems like. I can remember we were doing something and my back was turned to her and I just thought she'll never recognize me and she never did. Later I told her about it and she said, oh, she just never did know that was me. You know, so I, I was pretty cunning, I guess. You know, I, I could get around things. I, I knew the neighborhood very well and when the police would come, I, it seemed like I remember a time that they did come looking for me and I went out another way and I knew the neighborhood, like I said, so I could cut through alleys, jump over fences, whatever it was. I was a so tomboy. Yeah, and I, you were definitely on the run. You didn't want to be found at that time in no, your life. No, not at all. Did the I police was, catch up to you finally? Yes, in that same house, I was watching TV. Um, that time I wasn't doing anything as far as drugs or drinking. I just was watching TV and I heard a, a pounding at the door. Police open up, we know you're in there. And um, I like 
turned down the TV and I ran out the back door like I would normally do, went through the alley, jumped the fence, and on the next street they caught me. And actually that was the best thing could happen to me, you know, that they caught me because then my life could have had a chance at that mm -hmm. point. So I never did call on the Lord either because growing up, my mom didn't mean to push me away from the Lord, but she would always say, um, God's going to punish you, Sylvia. God's going to punish you one Every day. Every time you did something wrong? Yeah. Well, I was really a handful at mm -hmm. that time. And, um, you know, I could understand some of the things that she did later on in life. At the time, I didn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in that, with that thought, you know, I'm thinking also that the, well, the enemy devil had me. So he magnified that so much to where I just didn't think I could ever come to the Lord. And I never did know about the born again experience either. And uh, so, so you I, felt like God was just a God of judgment, not a God of love. Yes. And I thought I had crossed the line because mm -hmm. I had done so much at such a young age. Mm -hmm. I just thought I'm just doomed. I remember looking up at the sky one day and, the, and it was just looked so dark. It just looked so angry to me. And I just that was God to me. You know, even though when I was younger, I loved God. Uh, we were uh, raised in a different religion, and I really loved God. At a young age, I sang in a choir, you know, where we went to, and I just loved him only because um, I had heard, they had taught us, it wasn't out of the Bible or anything, but I had heard them say, um, uh, it was a question about who made you, and then the answer was, God made you, he created heaven and earth, and he made you, and I was like, wow. This whole world he made, and then he made me too. <laughs> oh, I love him, you know. And so I did love him. Right. You know. So and you had childlike faith, so you he, believed. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I just, I just did love the Lord. And so then um, they took me to a detention home, and I stayed there for about a month before my court date came. And uh, so then the lady, the parole officer, I believe, was came to see me, and she said. Uh, Sylvia, will you run away? Because I was so hard to find for so long. Will you run away if we send you here? I said, yes. I said, if you uh, want to send me anywhere, send me where my sister is, because my older sister was somewhere also, and she was getting ready to leave there, though. So your sister was also in a, a home? Mm-hmm. OK. Because she ran away also. And so they, was, they were like, okay, we'll send you there. And I was so happy because I knew at least I knew somebody because I didn't know what to expect and I always heard bad things. And where I was at already wasn't so good. You know, it was very confined. You really had to watch yourself. You, know, you had to watch your back, mm -hmm. you know. And, right. and being so young, it was pretty terrifying for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so um, and it taught me a lesson. You know, I deserved it. <laughs> so. It, it uh, like Reverend Angie used to say, it's good for what ails you. Right, <laughs> yeah, so. right. <laughs> but um, so uh, after I did my t uh, my time, uh, being so young, um, I ended up going home and uh, kind of went back into the same thing again. So all this time, you're just basically bouncing around, you're bouncing around, just living your life oh. however you want, mm -hmm. with no direction. No love, no God. And that's the thing, too. Just that wild. You, you said it exact as far as no love. That was something I didn't have. And I just, and, and I, I thank God for his mercy, because even though I made those choices, excuse me, he, um, he still was there for me. You know, he still had his hand upon you, even yeah. though you felt God was the God of judgment. He yeah. was still looking out for you. Yeah, and I didn't have. I felt worthless. And when I was about 24, I went to um, Arkansas. After that, I had told the Lord that I I wanted my life to change. I went to Arkansas, like I said, and then there was a lady preacher there that introduced me to the Lord and led me to the sinner's prayer, into the sinner's prayer, and I received the Lord as my Savior. At that time, I was married, and um, he, my husband also had said the sinner's prayer, but later told me, you know, I knew he didn't mean it. I did. Mm -hmm. Well, things went bad from there, and um, it was about a month later, uh, we moved back to Cleveland. Because I never heard of the born again experience in Cleveland in those years, previous years, I just thought, well, I was devastated. I thought, I, what am I going to do now? You know, I'm going back to life, and I wasn't happy about it. And I. So you got saved, but you didn't know how to live for the Lord. No, because no one ever. 
I had no one to guide me. So you really had a sincere heart. You wanted to have the Lord in your life, yeah. but you had no guidance mm -hmm. or direction, and you right. didn't have a church really to help you right. grow in the Lord, right. in the faith. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to take a quick break, but we want to hear your story, what happened when you came back to the Cleveland area and how God moved for you. Mm -hmm. So okay. friends, stay with us. <laughs> we have more to come. I was in a very bad marriage. He had beaten me to where I was unrecognizable, and I really didn't think that I was going to live that night. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 26. All flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Will God really forgive me? Maybe the sins I've committed are just too unforgivable. Have I gone too far? I didn't think God would ever forgive me. But I was wrong. I found Jesus and everything changed. I have a brand new life. Jesus died for my sins so I could be forgiven. So that I could have abundant life so that I could be made a new creature in Christ. He said he would never remember my sins. He said, though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them white as snow. Don't you want forgiveness for your sins? Come to Jesus today. early 20s, I started drinking alcohol, which led me into a depression. I was at rock bottom, and eventually I almost committed suicide. But there was one day when my mom said to me the most beautiful words I've ever heard, you've tried everything else. Isn't it time that you try Jesus? I gave my heart to the Lord that day. I felt his loving arms wrap around me and I was delivered 100% of everything that was binding me. He delivered me of alcohol. He delivered me of suicidal thoughts and the depression was completely gone. And I know because I have joy unspeakable and full of glory today. So if you're searching for that missing piece in your life, isn't it time that you try Jesus? Our Grace family is supported by viewers like you. Your donation is greatly appreciated. Your financial gift ensures that this faith building program can continue to be a blessing to you and your family and to many others just like you. We're back with Sylvia and now she's gonna let us know how that God protected her in a great way when she was in this bad, abusive relationship. Yes, I, I, without the guidance of the Holy Spirit, I was in a very bad marriage. And um, he had beaten me to where 
I was unrecognizable, and I really didn't think that I was going to live that night. But the Lord made a way for me to, to get out. And um, so a little bit of time had gone by. So thank the Lord that he did show me that mercy, that love, that because being with him just for the short time I was with him, I just felt worthless. Yeah, your life was really in danger. I mean, if you were yes. beaten to the point of un you know, recognition. I mean, yeah. that's that's very bad. My when my brother-in-law saw me, he he when he saw my face, he was like, you know, there's laws against this. Mm -hmm. You don't have to take this, but that's just saying that to say it. That's how I, it was. My face was very bad. So some time had gone by, and I I um I started to watch a little bit of Reverend Angelie, didn't know who he was at the time, didn't know whether... So you, you were know. already out of this marriage at this point. Yes, thank mm -hmm. God, thank God. And um, he he didn't stop, though. he came come after me a couple of times, but because I was saved, God never let him by... He never came by me again after mm -hmm. I got saved. So I thank God for that to this day. And um, so uh, I was watching TV, um, and Reverend Angie came on, and uh, he was talking. I think at that time he had the voice of experience, and he was talking on that. And um, I watched for a little bit, but I wasn't interested at that point. And at that time, a lot of televangelists and stuff, you know, and uh, I just wasn't sure, you know, mm -hmm. who to trust. So some time went by, and my mother-in-law one day again, she was watching TV, and it was Reverend Angie again. And so um, I was sat down to watch, and Rocky was singing a song and I really enjoyed. I don't remember what it was. I wish I did. Third time I watched, he, Reverend Angie was on the set with a team from people, of people that went to Africa. And as I was watching, I noticed when he, they put the camera on him again, his face and they were talking about fasting too, I remember. His face was like a brightest light bulb. And I wanna also mention, which I forgot, was that I, when I sat up to look at him, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And I knew that that was God, letting me know he was a real man of God, he was true. When I was looking at his face, I was looking for any kind of anything, any kind of darkness, any kind of, fear, any kind of hate, anything, just anything, nothing. It was just all pure. And I, that was all I needed to know. That and made I told an my, impression on you. Absolutely, yes. to this day. Because you saw the glory of God upon him and you knew this must truly be a man of God. Absolutely, to this day. Mm -hmm. And um, I, uh, my husband and I, my new husband and I uh, came to the services after that. that and that was in 2006. And I don't need to go anywhere else. <laughs> so when you <laughs> walked through the doors, when you walked through the doors, how did you feel? Oh, there was such a stillness, such a holy uh, presence. Had you ever experienced that before? Somewhat, but not to that degree. It was the greatness of God there. Mm -hmm. And uh, still is. And I know the people were in such reverence of that presence, and there was, it was so orderly. Other churches, because I had did some church hopping, if you will, I could tell it was. I mean, it was completely different, and the other ones were not so orderly, you know, and this or that. This was just, it was just like a perfect place to be <laughs> to me. <laughs> And I just enjoy the service so much. I, I just had to keep, we just, both of us, me and my husband and my daughter at the time, we all just kept coming. It's been wonderful. This is home. Yes. <laughs> so no all more I can think about <laughs> of your life is you at such a young age on the run, trying to find your own happiness, your own peace, mm -hmm. and going down that dark path of drugs, alcohol, at such a young age and not really having a home and your life being turned upside down and then marrying an abusive husband that, you know, almost, you know, killed you. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a lot to deal with in life. 
but God still found a way to draw you into his greatness. Yes, yes, and I, I'm, I am just so in awe of the love of God. You know, he, yeah. he just took away all, like a giant eraser, a friend of mine said <laughs> once, like a giant eraser erased all of that. All that All past. the hurt, mm -hmm. all the bad. And it just a new life. And now you know he's a God of love. Yes. And with God, he brings that perfect peace. And we have a very special song that we want our audience to hear today. Oh, and this song is from the Three Bells of Heaven with the musicians. And this song is called Perfect Peace. Friend, listen to this song and let it bless you in a great way. lost without you Lord I had no peace within I found myself seeking to please myself and then but then you came into my life and to He said, peace, peace, perfect peace, I leave with you, my child. Not as the world can give, mine comes with power. You can go now and search the world around. But you will never find a greater love than the love of Jesus now you have found. If I had only known you sooner, Lord, I could have saved all that time, all those tears. Taking on the mind of Christ today, but has healed all of those years And now I'm living in your promises Taking on the more excellent way He said, peace, peace, perfect peace I need Not as the world can give, mine comes with power. You can go now and search the world around. But you will never find a greater love than the love of Jesus now you
Welcome back, friend. I hope you really enjoyed that song. And perfect peace, that is exactly what we receive when we become born again. And I'm so glad, Sylvia, that you came back to the Lord and you're serving Him with your whole heart. And now you have that perfect peace. Amen. <laughs> and thank you so much for being on the show today and for sharing your special story. I just love, Sylvia, how, you know, God protected your life. Amen. You know, you, it could have went the other way and all of a sudden, you wouldn't Without even be doubt. here. Without a doubt. So what a blessing to have our Lord and Savior protect you Amen. and then you come to the Lord. Yes. Well, friend, this was a wonderful show today and we'd like to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ into your heart. Pray with us now and say, Oh God, save my soul. Forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Amen. Friend, if you meant that prayer, you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Come and be with us in the services at Grace Cathedral. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. We would love to hear from you. If you are encouraged or blessed by today's program, let us know. You can email us at OGF at thegracecathedral.org or write to us. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Ernest Angley Ministries.